So last week we had released a lesson on how to recreate Figma's multi-action prototype example. And I got a request on Slack from one of our UI Collective community members to recreate and demonstrate how to build the volume bar that Figma has in their documentation. So today, that's what we're gonna look at. We're going to build a quick prototype uh, for a volume bar that increases and decreases the volume based on, based on whatever button is pressed. And the link for this file will also be in the description for you to play around with as well. Let's get started. So let's get started building our volume bar. So I'm just gonna add a quick frame. Let's just set it to let's say 500 by 250. Again, it doesn't really matter um, just for the purposes of this exercise. Next, let's add a rectangle that'll serve as our volume bar. And let's set it to 400 in width and maybe 25 uh, in height. And to make it appear as if it's a volume bar, let's drop the uh, radius all the way down. Next, I'm going to simply copy and paste, copy on top, set that to our surface action one. And I'm going to set it to the middle. So let's set it to 200 because again, the uh, total container is set to 400. Next, actually, I'm going to sort of center this real quick. There we go. Next, let's uh, add our increase and decrease buttons for our volume bar. So quick button, again, doesn't need to look too pretty. We then add a plus. something like that. And then I'm gonna change that to our text on action. Group this together and call this our increase. And then copy and paste, change the plus to a minus. And then I'm going to call this decrease. There we go. Sweet. So there we have our volume bar. Next, look at adding the variables and conditional logic that will control the volume bar. So let's start by adding a variable for our volume bar that we're gonna to set to 200. And the reason we're gonna set it to 200 is because our full width has the potential to be 400 and we're gonna want our volume bar to start in the middle at that 200 level. So let's open up our local variables, create a variable, a number variable, call it volume bar. We're gonna set the value again to 200. And then we need to tell Figma that this variable is associated with this volume bar. So I'm going to hit our uh, volume bar layer and then add a variable to the width for volume bar. Excuse these other variables here. These are from a prior lesson. Set that to 200, which is uh, in coordination with our local variable volume bar. So now that we have that applied, we wanna add some conditional logic that will um, control whether the volume bar goes up or down based on whether our decrease or increase button is clicked. So let's start with our increase button and let's add some conditional logic. So our conditional logic is going to state that if the volume bar is less than or equal to, let's say 390, what's going to happen is the volume bar, oops, we'll set the variable, our volume bar is going to increase by 10 plus 10. And the reason why we're setting this to 390 is let's just have a quick demonstration here. So again, it's going up in increments of 10. So let's preview it real quick. And the reason why we set it to 390 is because we don't want it to go over 400. Because if it goes over 400, then all of a sudden it's going outside of the container. And if our logic, if it's increasing by 10, we want the last possible value to be 400, which is why we set it to 390 so that it stops at that 400 mark. And once it hits that 400 mark, it no longer goes up. So let's do the same, but for the decrease button. So let's add interaction, conditional logic. That's going to state that if the volume level at this time is greater than or equal to 10. Are, we're going to set a variable that the volume level is going to the volume level minus 10. And let's test this out. So same type of logic, but just simply reversed. There we go. I can see that that stops right at the end. And again, 
it goes all the way to 400 and stops at 400. So there you have it. That is how you create an interactive volume bar using variables and conditional logic. Thanks so much for watching today. I'd like to invite everyone to join uicollective.co. You'll get free access to all of our training, all of our courses, access to our Slack channel as well, where you can chat with myself, my partner, Mike, directly for any Figma questions you might have. And you also get access to sweet templates like this one, such as our token map. Uh, perfect for design systems, designers looking to uh, organize their colors, their styles, whatever it may be. And that link will also be in the description. Hope to see you soon.